Hello my lovelies, Rob here from Kickback Garage. Today I'm just going to go through why I think the uh, Casa Performance Multispline Lay Shaft is the best uh, lay shaft on the market at the moment for your Lambretta. So if that's something you're interested in, grab the old coffee and I'll send the old scooter over. Woo! Before I go through why I reckon this is the best uh, lay shaft system uh, for your Lambretta at the moment, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit of a story. Now, about 10 years ago, it could be more, uh, I went to a rally in Trondheim, which is about 800 kilometers from my house each way, so it was quite a bit of a jaunt. Uh, I pulled up to a petrol station and uh, I found that my uh, hub was loose and actually fell off at the petrol station. Uh, what I did was uh, tighten it up and I got to the rally itself. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, one of the lads uh, I rode up with got sick. Uh, he was the guy that was riding in the, or driving the, uh, the van that we had with us. And I threw my scooter in the back and I followed all the scooters back down again. Uh, on day one, it didn't turn out that well because one of the other lads, he had the same problem with me and uh, he lost his uh, back wheel while I was riding behind him. And uh, this was on pretty gnarly uh, Norwegian roads. Uh, it, was, it was really horrible to watch, to tell you the truth. The, the rear wheel, it uh, left the scooter, it popped the scooter up and uh, threw, him off, uh, threw him off the scooter and uh, it slid over the road into a sort of a mountainside and uh, he was a bit of a mess. He ended up uh, two, or was it three weeks in hospital? I can't quite remember. But anyway, it, uh, it put me off riding Lambrettas for, for quite, a few, uh, quite a few years. Now, when I was coming back to the uh, Lambretta thing, I, uh, I noticed that uh, Casa Performance, they started uh, making this lay shaft system. Now, the fault with the normal standard type lay shaft system isn't really in the lay shaft itself, it's in the user. Uh, the problem with these parts is that they've been running for 50 or 60 years and uh, the spline and cone system that they use, uh, it's really, really important that you use the correct torque and that's something people don't do. So what happens is if they don't use the correct torque and the hub itself uh, starts to develop a little bit of movement, then you bugger up the splines. Now, uh, the bad thing about that is uh, once the splines are buggered up, both on the hub and on the lay shaft, then you're never going to get the correct interference fit and you could suffer the same fate as my mate when he's lost his back wheel. I reckon it's the biggest Achilles heel in the whole of the uh, construction of the Lambretta because it really is dependent that you use the correct torque and <laughs> sometimes even the, uh, more than the correct torque to keep that rear wheel in place. Now let's have a look at the uh, multi-spline uh, lay shaft and I'll uh, talk you through it. Right chaps, so this is the Castle Performance uh, Octopus uh, lay shaft kit. Now this is the multi-spline spine, uh, version and the hub incidentally only comes in uh, a powder coated gray. But as you can see, this is black uh, basically because I have painted it so it matches my, can you see it there? Matches the uh, black case that I'm building for the SST265. Now, there's a few unique features about this uh, hub system and the reason why uh, it was a bit of a pain and the reason why I stopped doing scootering for a, for a couple of years was the fact that lay shafts, uh, decently made lay shafts, are really hard to, uh, were, <laughs> sorry, really hard to come by. Now, the only thing that was feasible for me at the time on the market was actually this uh, this Octopus uh, lay shaft system when it came came out on the market. And uh, the reason, the things that are different about this compared to the other ones are, well, obviously this part of the lay shaft is, is completely uh, the same as the standard type lay shaft that uh, came from Innocenti, but this part, as you can see, it's got all these little splines here. Now, this is not dissimilar to uh, what they use on Vespers. The only difference being is on the Vespa, you have the castellated nut with the splint 
in the bottom there. Now, if you're very, very unlucky and this loosens, there's a much bigger chance because you've got all these um, places where the uh, hub attaches to the to the lay shaft. And uh, you've got a much bigger chance of not actually completely knackering it if it came loose. Uh, that being said, I've never, I've never had one that's uh, come loose. So uh, another feature about this is that the this part itself that attaches to your hub is uh, quite a bit thicker than uh, on the original standard type, and uh, the bolt itself is also thicker as well. I can't remember what size thread these are. Uh, well, actually, I can <laughs> I can measure them. I've got my old uh, caliper here. Let's have a have a bit of a look. They are yeah, eighteen mil uh, threads on here. So that's uh, so that's that. Now another unique feature about this, or the, the a really cool thing about this, is if you need to uh, remove your hub on a standard Lambretta lay shaft, because it is a press fit, and I can't remember what is it. Is it something like uh, 160 newton or something in the region of that, which uh, is really really quite hefty on the original type hub. This one, incidentally, I think it's 114 newton to uh, tighten down the hub, which is similar to what the, uh, they use on uh, Vespers. Instead of the castellated nut here, we have the original type lock ring on the hub. And cool feature here is that you can actually use all these three holes to uh, lock down the uh, locking plate. Now, like I said, I've had uh, mine for almost four years. Uh, and I think I've had to take it off once because I had a seal that uh, that leaked and I had to change my brake pads as well. But normally when you're removing a Lambretta rear hub, the uh, procedure there is you really, really need to have a puller. Now, uh, over time, these threads here can be get knackered, so you can't use the puller. And then you're going to have to invest in a proper puller, uh, like what JB Fabrication uses, that actually grabs the hub itself. Hitting the hub from the backside to loosen your hub is not a very good thing. So don't do that. Now, uh, like I said, I've been running these for uh, almost four years. I have, I am on my, uh, this is the third one I fit. I haven't had any problems with them. The first ones, one thing to note, if you've got one of these lying around that you're gonna use on your next project, just check that you haven't got excess uh, goods around where the brick brick what's my jig is because uh, or the braking surface here because uh, what can happen is the uh, first ones they had a little bit of excess material here and or what happened was when you were uh, tightening down the hub uh, it it got really, really stiff. A lot of people thought that that was uh, something to do with the uh, the fit of this uh, ring here, and uh, they've shimmed them out, which is definitely a no-no. Don't do that. It's nothing to do with the bearing. It's actually got to do with this, and it and it sits on um, on your engine case there, and it, it can rub a little bit. It's not the bearing; it's the actual engine case. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you had one of those lying around, you could probably give uh, Rimini Lambretta a bit of a shout out and they would uh, <laughs> probably exchange it, I imagine. Uh, good shops like that do good stuff like that. So that was a bit of a mistake. But uh, otherwise, I've uh, been really, really pleased with this. Now, uh, another feature that it's got, I uh, almost failed to mention. The reason why it's called Octopus is it has these eight mounting studs for your rear wheel. Now, at first I was thinking this uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense because I've actually never sheared off a rear stud. Apparently, lots of people have. I've never done it. But I, uh, I <laughs> even when I started with Lambertas, I used to buy uh, uh, NOS Spanish rear hubs, which apparently are some of the good ones. The uh, Series 2 Spanish series hubs are very good, nice and thick. Um, 
And there's been quite a bit of thought gone into this uh, design here. I think it's the original Innocenti Series 2 hub, which is uh, thicker. And they've even put more goods or more metal around this area here because we did have a little spit a few years ago of uh, hubs that completely cracked all the way around. I had that happen, but that was uh, notably because I had a, a rear hydraulic disc brake. And that's why I don't run those now. Um, like I said, I don't quite understand why I would need eight fixing points for my rear wheel. But now that we're getting up to silly stuff like 50-55 uh, horsepower on the rear wheel, uh, it's sort of beginning to make a little bit of sense. So it does take a little bit longer to remove the rear wheel when you're going to take it off. Uh, but these will fit. You can, they've actually got a little bit of a recess on every other one of these uh, studs here. So you can actually fit normal uh, rims to these as well. But uh, why would you? If you're going to up your date your scooter, heave, throw tubeless uh, wheels on them as well. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, and so they've beefed up this area and they've also beefed up the area here that holds the center bus into, uh, into the hub. Now, before I leave you, what I, another thing I want to talk about is the fact that because this isn't a press fit system, it actually means that once you've talked down uh, your hub here, can I get it in there? <laughs> yes, I can. It's quite a, quite a tight fit. That's nice, nicely reassuring. So once you've got this on the scooter and you, uh, you fit it and you need to take it off, as soon as you've loosened the nut, it's loose. So that means you don't need any special uh, fancy puller to remove your hub from your uh, scooter. So that's, uh, that's really nice, especially when you're doing stuff like uh, shimming gearboxes and stuff like that and you need to pull the lace shaft tight. Here you can use the hub without any problem and uh, it's really, really easy to remove. The only one to watch, I reckon, when you fit it is the fact that once you, when you've got it on the, uh, the scooter, if you want to and you tighten down your, your hub, uh, hub nut, obviously, uh, when you go to fit the locker ring, you might find that it is uh, out so that you can't use all the uh, screws as intended. So what you have to do is actually <laughs> take off the hub, which luckily is an easy thing, and twist it a little bit, tuck it down once again, and see where you are, uh, the lay of the land for where the uh, holes are after you fit the, uh, fit the ring there. So what I do as well, when I'm removing them, because you have to find <laughs> the correct position to fit them on the splines, I normally use a little marker pen or a grease pen and just mark on the lay shaft and on the hub so that when I fit the hub again, I can just smack it straight on, tuck it up, and I know that this uh, lock ring will fit. Okay? So I hope you found that interesting. That's the reason why I like them. Now, obviously, there's a lot of good uh, lay shafts out on the market now. Uh, MB do one, uh, a nice one. Incidentally, I think the MB one, when I, was, uh, when I first buy, bought this, the MB one was uh, sold out. And uh, BGM now make a nice uh, lay shaft. Uh, Casa Performance or, or Casa Lambretta, they make a nice lay shaft. But uh, if you're going to upgrade the whole system, then uh, there's absolutely... I have, I have got absolutely no problems in uh, recommending this system. Now, it also comes... When you buy the full kit, it comes with this. And it also comes with a new type of uh, rear hub bearing. The reason for that is obviously because this area is thicker, it has to uh, be slightly wider in a diameter on there. And that's it, job done. So what I'm gonna do, I've, I've started uh, building this engine here and I'm not gonna show you really uh, how to do it because uh, Castle Performance got a nice little video on the uh, on YouTube already on how to build these. But I will go through the parts, like I said, and uh, go through the uh, main differences between the parts that you fit on this and your standard original type parts. Okay, great stuff. Then uh, don't forget, if you want to uh, support the channel, you can uh, buy merch, you can uh, buy me a coffee up in the right-hand corner there, and uh, don't forget, do the old subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra!